right, guys. What's going on? Uh, welcome, fellow art warriors, to another Art Friends stream. This time we're here with Mace Tan, who is actually one of uh, Oliver's old buddies from school. And uh, he's a concept artist and illustrator at Caravan Studios. And we're going to be talking to him about his process. He might do a little painting demo for us and uh, just basically talking art. So, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Mace. Hey, Oliver. Thanks for, you know, joining again. And um, yeah, to kind of to kind of kick us off, to warm us up a little bit, I like to ask you guys, um, Mace, if you could be in any uh, in any video game world, what would it be? Like, if you could mm -hmm. actually put yourself in any video game world, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> that's actually a, a difficult question. I would say probably Dragon Age. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> What class would you be? I would be a rogue. A rogue, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you'd be a badass at least. Because <laughs> you don't want to be you don't want to be stuck in that world like as a peasant. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty dangerous world, right? <laughs> cool. So um so yeah, so you you are working at uh, Caravan Studios. You were just saying off stream that you've been there for a couple months now so far, right? Yeah, almost two months though. And you're you're out in Indonesia, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, hence the twelve hour time difference. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so you and Oliver went to the uh Vancouver school together, right? That's how you yeah. guys met. Yeah. Can can you kinda <laughs> yeah, we did. briefly tell me how how that went? Because uh Oliver was like saying yeah he was that guy that was just like always better than me at art and blah 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 <laughs> uh, uh, are you going first Oliver? uh no no it's it's a question okay well i actually the first time i, I saw oliver i thought he was indonesian okay. <laughs> because well, yeah you you have the face and everything like everything from you speak speaks Indonesian, so I was like, oh, I would, you know, I would uh, try to start a conversation with that guy. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember like I asked him like, where do you come from? Saying like, I, I was expecting like, oh, I, I'm from Indonesia. So I, I basically just want you know at least one Indonesian friend, mm -hmm. you know, to be in the same same class as me. But then then he said. Oh, I'm from England. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So, <laughs> but so, then he told me like uh, he's half Japanese. So, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, that that and must I be. Understand. Yeah, I understand that way. <laughs> so, were you guys like in a bunch of classes together, and or was it mostly just outside of school that you were hanging out? We we're like in the same class. So, like, yeah, I think the same class, all subjects. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Even in the same group, I think twice, once or twice. Same right? group. Yeah. 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 Nice. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, Mace, I know that you guys graduated from that school quite a while ago. So what was, like, your transition from going there to working at Caravan? What were you kind of doing uh, in between? It's actually, it hasn't been easy for me, you know, uh, as always, <laughs> I yeah, would yeah. say. <laughs> because as we know as artists, after, right? <laughs> yeah. After we graduated, uh, I was, I think I tried to find a job. Like I sent, I don't know, maybe more than 10, 20 of application, like mm -hmm. job application. But just a few of them got back to me. And say like uh, we already have uh, the artist that we need or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up doing freelance for almost two years okay. after I graduated. Yeah. Yeah. So on when I'm doing freelance, I would do like a lot of work. Like I mean, a lot of work in in terms of um, that's every kind of work you know from art from um, concept design illustrations graphic novel 
like anything I could I could do. So then um was it was it mostly um smaller clients you were working with or were you working with yeah. bigger studios or anything? Usually it's a smaller clients though. Okay. And just one day, like I think it's uh, last year on August, like I was like, wait, wait, Caravan is a uh, like a top tier studio, illustration studio in my mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. They mostly do outsourcing job from all over the world, I would say. Nice. And yeah, could you I, I, <laughs> examples yeah, of the uh, client list? Like just a few, just because uh, some people might not have heard of uh, Caravan as well. Oh, okay, right. Um, they do, I think, a lot of work for Smite. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, yeah Smite, the splash art, and the Chinese MOBA, mobile game, <laughs> something like that. Because I saw like uh, the brief comes in Chinese, so nobody could understand the briefs. Oh, really? <laughs> it's really awkward. Like, nobody <laughs> in my office like speaks Mandarin. Gotcha. So, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. We were like, well, fortunately, like the clients, mm, they give us some pictures, so we go, oh, they want, uh, they want something like this, something like that. So, just, yeah. Yeah. and it looks like you guys have done stuff for Marvel as well? Oh, yeah. Nice. I guess. Because uh, we have like a movie and video game division. Oh, nice. So uh, the video game, video game, I mean, I, I shouldn't say video. Uh, okay, video game, but mostly we are working for trading card game. Okay. And the film divisions they, they usually they also do outsourcing but the concept art work mostly happens in the film division in the movies division so the illustration the video games divisions usually only works uh, with illustrations oh interesting so like yeah. production shots and marketing materials and stuff like that i i guess yeah okay okay cool that makes sense Interesting. so what 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 division do you mainly work with just just that well as an intern i would say like they put me in the illustrations yeah. so i would work on the illustration but i mostly work on items Okay. Like uh, uh, trading card games for trading card games, but just last week I got a. Well, I just. I guess they needed some help, like a few helps, mm -hmm. you know, and then they gave me, uh, concept work, uh, oh, awesome. for a movie. Like it's 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 a for a local movie, okay. so I helped them like, just do a couple of, paint over and stuff. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, um, just just backtracking as well because uh we, we we talked i know we cut, like talked about the school and everything but um how, how did you kind of um went from like uh like university like did you do any work before vancouver film school like did you have any prior experience before then as well yeah actually i i do have prior experience Mm -hmm. uh, I think in 2015, I worked at a, with a, I think it's a company from UK. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing this. Uh, they were doing a trading card game, something like that, dystopian trading card game. Oh. That's what they say. And I would work. I did some of the illustrations, though. Mm. But now that I realized that the workflow and everything is so it, it's so it was so different back then because I don't know maybe he's just like a, maybe they only have like a small team or something like that mm -hmm. so it's it's quite different but I did work for a trading card game once and then before that 
I did animation, 3D animations. Yeah, cool. Uh, oh. Yeah, that was from my university. Yeah. So, so how much experience do you have doing 3D and stuff like that? Like, were you, so you were, I guess you were taught in school. Um, is that, is that also, uh, is that a skill you use like in your studio work at Caravan or is it mostly you're just painting? Mostly I, I, I'm just painting right now, gotcha. yeah, but, um, animation, I guess has taught me a lot of things though. Because I, I was really into that, so I would, you know, I would learn some fundamentals and basic stuff and learn, you know, to improve myself. So were you doing any 2D animation or was it strictly 3D? Uh, I did both. Okay, cool. Uh, 2D, 2D and 3D because they, they taught us, yeah, they taught us both. But nice. With 2D, we use like the paper, pen and paper or something like that. Oh, wow. Um, it's like, yeah, like real traditional. I, yeah, before Vancouver Film School, I didn't really get the chance to do like digital 2D animation properly. Mm -hmm. mm. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, was, uh, I was actually talking to Oliver last time on stream about this. Because uh, I, I, I've been doing a lot of 2D animation for my video game. And what I found has helped me is it's just, it's almost like gesture drawing to a certain extent. And the fact that I've had to draw characters from such different angles and poses and stuff like that, I think that's what animation has helped me with more than anything in my painterly work. It kind of like forces you to do like these weird motions with characters that you wouldn't otherwise be drawing. So, right. I think we I have, I have to agree on that though, because I was an animator, like, but I think that's the the most important lesson that I got from animation mm -hmm. because we always yeah. start with simple shapes and everything. So it's it's probably easier for animator to do drawing that looks like in motion mm -hmm. than, than some other people, I would guess. Yeah. Um, the yeah. Crimson Vis Vixen just asked an uh, art question. Can you make ge a genuine living without making art uh having to do with not safe for work art so i mean I, I think mace is a is a prime example of this he's he's doing uh it's it's wolfa uh oh it's wolfa that's right um yeah uh yeah i mean mace is a prime example of this he's working at like a major studio in his country and he's doing concept art and illustration i mean i'm doing concept art and illustration too i i don't think i've ever done not safe for work art and uh <laughs> i i know plenty of others so yeah you definitely can can make a living um doing that it's just a matter of uh sort of like where your priorities lie and where you're trying to like push yourself i think that having like a certain um thing that you're into can can definitely help i think um just from looking at mace's portfolio it looks like he's always, or at least like his portfolio is more geared towards character stuff, right? So he's like more of a character guy. I think I'm also more of like a character guy. Um, Oliver has like a little bit of, you You have some lands, landscape stuff going on and like environment stuff. It kind of seems like you like painting big, big scenes in general. Um, <laughs> Wolfa goes, well, that's how to make all three art bros get awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, actually, I was, this was going <laughs> to be a funny thing, because Mace, have you ever got requested for, like, not safe for work kind of illustration in the past? I did. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> not really explicitly not safe for work, but the graphic novel that I worked on, it had some, you know, adults moments. <laughs> But it's it's not explicit though, so it's yeah, it's it's from a different angle. And I have to show it from the angle that nobody could, you know, yeah, see that it's explicit. So yeah, something like that. That's Oliver. the only thing. I... Yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you off, <laughs> Oliver. Jonathan yeah. Duncan just hopped in. He goes, "I'm I'm in just in time." <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, you are, my friend. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> not safe for work art. But yeah, let's uh let's let's get back on track with like the studio stuff. Um so in terms of your kind of like day to day, what is that what does that gen- generally look like? I know you said you've been doing like illustrations for card art and like more items and stuff like that. So you get into the studio, is it like a nine to five sort of thing or do you have set hours? What's, what's your schedule? Yeah, it, like? it, it's like a nine to five things, but most of people come after nine or 10. <laughs> so Just- it's not basically <laughs> like a, a rock solid, you know, sure, sure. rules or something. As long as you get the job done, they would say, Mm-hmm. Something like that, yeah. Okay. So it's quite relaxed. Then um, would you say? Would you say it's quite relaxed for you? It is. Like, yeah, it is. Into yeah. It, it's quite relaxed, but I, I myself, I personally don't want to come in late, so I always try and be there before nine because I don't like. I don't know. It's just probably a personal preference, but I don't like uh being late on something so (laughs) um and oliver i think asked a good question before we were on stream as well like how many how many people uh are sort of in your group and do you report to an art director or how does how does the structure sort of work with your studio yeah for the illustrator i would say we have like okay i don't really remember the number Memorize the number. Let me count it: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Over, uh, I think around thirty. Yeah, thirty, thirty or something. It's not all of very big studios, but I can say they work really fast. That's <laughs> why, so like, gotcha. they right now they have quite a lot of projects like just last friday mm. they had they, they got a lot of projects or something so they kind of all over the place right now but i think they could you know they could do that they work really really fast and in terms of uh, my day-to-day basic because i i'm working for trading card game mm-hmm. uh well it's uh I think it's a it's a mandatory to report to the art director before so they have art director and after art director approve the thumbnails rough sketches rough color and something like that or the final color uh and then i have to send the final like psd files to the project manager that's usually how it goes. Gotcha. So it's uh, from me, our director, and then project manager. If you got approved, do do you um do you guys have other artists that are doing like paint overs of your work and like uh basically almost like collaborating on illustrations or is it kind of like you're assigned to an image, you finish it, maybe your art director has some ideas for you or whatever, um, but it's pretty much like yours is getting completely set out sent out okay most of the time like we we will get assigned like one project and then we need to do that from scratch to finish okay sometimes they would give us like a 50 percent done project or something or 70 percent, and then they will ask us to help them with the background like Mm. uh i think uh a couple of small stuff, but not the big stuff. Okay. Usually the big stuff goes from art director to art director. Yeah. So, you know, it's like art director helping the other art director. We gotcha, we gotcha. have like four art directors right now. What? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, Wolfa asks, if you work from home, how do you cope with switching off from art? you're doing for work so wolf are you basically saying like if you're working at a studio and then you come home to do more art how are you switching off are you saying like from another non-art related job i think uh 
we might want some clarity on that question. Um, but yeah, so, um, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about your, your freelance stuff and actually also like, what, what do you think kind of pushed you to get a portfolio together to send out and finally get this job you're at now? Um, well, I think it started like after I graduated, after we graduated from Vancouver Film School, mm -hmm. I was really into uh, character concept art at that time. But, but um, I think I was flirting with illustration, like character illustration or something like that. Sure. And then I got interested in it. So I was trying to learn illustrations like compos from compositions, you know, everything like perspective. And I, because I mostly work alone and not like a lot of my friends in my country have the same passion and have the same, you know, mm. yeah, I think they don't have the same, pa same passion, mm -hmm. passion for drawing or illustration. So, I felt that I needed, uh, you know, I needed some people, you know, mm -hmm. or at least one person to guide me because sure. I was, I would say I was really new into illustrations because I, I, I'm so used to, I was so used to doing concept art, you know, work really fast, you know, thinking about concept and something like that sure. and give it, give it to the yeah, the next person. But for illustration, I need to think more deeply about the illustration that I would do. So, yeah, because the studios, is, the caravan is already popular, I would <laughs> yeah. say. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. Um, they have a pretty high standard for a full-time employee if you apply. So I thought that oh let's try and ask them if they if they you know if they have a, a spot for intern like have a place for intern and i said yes i just send the portfolio so i sent the portfolio and then they say okay um we're gonna give you a test so they gave me a test mm -hmm. so basically every intern has to do the test before they can get in so yeah it was it was a, a great experience though doing the test because i struggled a lot <laughs> yeah but yeah it's a, i guess it's just slack you know if it's i if got it's, in and then i learned a lot of yeah. stuff so yeah sorry, uh sorry that um, i just wanted to ask him before i forget like is it like did they is it okay to ask like how long they give you gave you for the test like just the art test or like yeah or, it's yeah, it was a week. It was a week. Yeah, it was a week. Nice. nice. It's one illustration. What, was there anything specific about your portfolio that they um, referenced when they wanted to hire you? Because I think that's a oh. that's an interesting thing for people to to learn. Because a lot of people are like, "Well, what do I put in my portfolio?" and I think mm. typically when a studio hires you, they're like looking at a specific element of your portfolio that makes you special or, right. or they think makes you stand out. So did they give you any feedback on that when they, when they brought you on? Well, they didn't really give me any feedback, but as the time goes by mm. uh, while I'm working there, I kind of hear a lot of stuff, you know, some stuff from them. Mm -hmm. about how they assign you a project they assign the, a specific artist a specific project mm -hmm. or a specific illustrations because i think i'm like the only one who does <laughs> i'm the only one who doesn't wear a, a, an earphone or, a, or headphones you know <laughs> so i can yeah. hear everything all the rumors and everything gotcha. I can hear them. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is how it, it basically goes uh -huh. So they would sign a person, a specific project, if they see in the portfolio. Uh, for example, one of, of my, of the coworker there, he's really good 
at drawing females, you know, painting females, portrait female figures. So mm -hmm. they would assign him like uh, to do like a, an illustration with female character in it. Sure. So the other one is is really good with creatures. So I think he's been working with creatures for like almost two months. Okay. Creature illustration. So. The other one is uh, really good with illustrations too, but uh, his style is kind of like, um, you know, Magic the Gathering style. Gotcha. Like uh, loose brushstrokes and everything. So they would assign like a, a suitable project for him. Um, it, so it usually goes like that. Yeah. Gotcha. But um, yeah. they would still assign you like a, a project that you feel like uncomfortable with because you know that's like studio so yeah so they would assign something yeah something else that you don't really comfortable painting but they will help you that's that's, that's the way how, how how i see it though they will guide you they will help well, what's cool about your studio is that it's more of an outsourcing studio and you guys have a lot of different projects going on at the same time, it seems like. So there's a, a lot of opportunity for different kinds of artists, like you said, like a character guy, a creature guy, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think I think just for people not unsure of like what kind of studio to look into, I think a lot of younger artists especially are like, Oh, I want to work at Blizzard. You know, everybody's like, I want to work at Blizzard. Um, but there are studios like the one Mace is working at that I think have opportunities for a lot of different styles, a lot of different variety of, uh, you know, interests and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, Nick, um, we've got a couple of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. or do you want to read some of these? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, one of these questions uh, is by. Per Playing canvas, say so, hi guys. Is it possible for an artist to work in a studio without art degree? Um, I mean, just good portfolio is enough. Also, is networking really vital? So, oh, in my studios, you don't need an art degree. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they only look at your work, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, think I think that's that's pretty that's pretty standard. I think, um, in terms of art school, it's like you're going to be surrounded by other people that are doing the same thing you're going to learn a little bit and you're going to uh uh you're going to the school so that you have hopefully some resources after you've graduated um but yeah i think most of these these studios like as long as your work is good enough and and they can see that you're able to present yourself properly, like that's, that's what they're looking for. And in terms of the networking, yes, at least in my experience, networking is extremely vital, especially if you're doing freelance, because a lot of the freelance gigs you're going to get are from, you know, word of mouth, meeting other people, going out of your way to go to conventions and just like show people who you are. And at the end of the day, um, the more people that know who you are and, and know what your art is like, the the better, because it's just going to open up more opportunities. So um, I'd say networking is a pretty crucial, crucial, crucial skill to uh, work on as an artist. Yeah, cool. Um, just just one thing to add to, uh, the, to the answer that question as well. Um, um, for me, the only reason why I think a degree would come in handy is if you're planning to work abroad so whether if you want to work in the us or like canada um they will like for me it's it's can be very um when you're with visas because they kind mm -hmm. of get complicated with uh, about how uh what what people can come in because the studio won't always um get that get that be able to get that funding to be able to um, get you in. But other than that, yeah, degree, degree. Well, uh, also going off that point, Oliver, too, I've even seen job listings um, here in the United States because it's so big. They mm. they'll require you to like live in the same state, you know, like, yeah. or at least advise, like, especially the ones out in California. 
Um, so when I was in Pennsylvania, I was even hesitant to apply to a lot of those because I'm like, how the heck am I even gonna gonna get there? Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is as well. Uh, sorry, just coming. If if you do plan to go to art school, I think one benefit like a universities with degrees, one thing is that would be beneficial is for internship opportunities with studios. Because I know for a fact, like some companies, they do require you to go, um, go to university to get that kind of opportunity in the UK as well. So it really depends um, where you're at. And so, yeah, yeah. just one. Um, so we got another good question. Zoriga Sophia says, hey, everyone, I'd also like to throw in a question. How different were your expectations versus the reality of when you got into the industry? I think that's a good one for Mace. Did you yeah. have any prior expectations before you started working there? Yeah, I did have <laughs> yeah. some yeah, expectations. And it doesn't like it didn't hold long though. It's just probably got ruined in the first week. So <laughs> it's basically it's quite different. I wouldn't say like really different, but it's better if you have um expectations because then we we would know like oh this is applicable for probably freelancers or applicable for for another you know type of job. Sure. Not when working in a studio, because working in a studio, uh, if I could be honest, like speed is probably, you know, one of the most important thing. Mm. Speed, so they would say like, well, they need like, they would need like a, a, an illustration done really quick, really fast, and it has to be good. So that really like, shocks me in a way like oh okay i usually spend a lot of time to get the best quality mm -hmm. out of my illustration or something like that but then they say like oh okay you have like uh probably three days to do this or, or a week to do this like how how am i gonna do this mm -hmm. so what uh my studio they they do like um they only do like two probably I wouldn't say thumbnails though, two sketches for like, mostly two sketches, you know, for a client to pick okay. two sketches, but the sketches has to be, they have to be like a solid sketch. Sure. You know, they, they don't have, well, they, they say the first time I got there, they say, oh, okay, do a uh, rough sketches. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay, it, it's really rough. Like my sketches was super rough and that, wasn't good so are they, are they looking for like colored sketches oh no just a line or something but gotcha, gotcha. they want like uh, the sketches in the right perspective you know sure the, the anatomy is clear the proportion is clear the background is clear so everything basically rough sketches mean like the client, nice. yeah the client already knows like okay there's a, uh, a character here the background will be from uh, like this and then the character is doing that doing uh, this thing mm -hmm. so it those things have to be clear and the most important thing are um if it's a character illustrations the most important things are uh the character face and his or her hands yeah so those two like the art director always you know comments okay. on those two so yep yeah that's I've heard that plenty of times faces yeah, and hands but, faces yeah. and so, hands <laughs> rough yeah. sketches and then they use photo you know uh, I, I i think i did a couple of photo bashing mm -hmm. because before i was like oh i'm not gonna do that like yeah. ever because i want to draw everything and in the studio it was like okay if you don't know how to draw this hand in this position, you know, yeah. take a picture of your friend's hands and then photo bash it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all about um, being efficient in a studio. Yeah. And uh, in a studio, that's I, right. I'm sure that's probably like a pretty big culture shock, especially coming from freelance. Like, 
like I've said this many times, but I've never worked like in house in a studio. I've worked for other studios, but always remote. So yeah, I I mean I had deadlines, but I was kind of like, you know, I could work all day and all night. I could kind of figure out how I was approaching things. Um, besides them recommending you to photo bash, are there like guidelines on process that they suggest you use or is it still kind of like up to the artist with how they want to approach a painting um <clears throat> in in the studio i would say we have a quite a freedom so they would say oh just do photo bash you know it, it's gonna make you easier they didn't they don't say like they don't say it like um do photo bash mm -hmm. you know like they don't say it like uh they got angry at you or something. They just say, oh, if you don't know how to draw this, you know, do photo pass, it will make it easier for you. But then the method, like they, they only say, they will only say like, uh, use some photos and paint it over. So mm -hmm. that's it. So it's, gotcha. it's basically up, up to us, you know, how we paint, how we render, this kind of stuff. Gotcha. Right. That's interesting. All right, we have a couple more questions. Let's just go through some of these um well first to answer uh wolf's question from earlier so do you do you go home and do any art at all mace like personal art or is it kind of like you do your studio work and then you're done for the day uh sometimes i do i do art you know, uh, after i got home but it's not like i would do something like a masterpiece or something epic. I just sure, sure. Usually, like draw some circles, you know, boxes. You just keep, you know, keep reminding me of what I'm, I'm trying to do. You know, just maybe studying some materials. Gotcha. You know, figure yeah. portraits something like that. because uh, I think the issues in in my country, like the number one issues, is the you know the the, the time that you would spend on the street. You know, the commute. Mm -hmm because it's it's a traffic uh, they have traffic jam gotcha, all gotcha. over the place you know anytime so i need to basically spend at least three hours every day on the street oh wow for a round trip yeah so it's so so are you drawing in a sketchbook or do you have like an ipad you're drawing on or something um i'm drawing in a, in a sketchbook gotcha but Mostly though, nowadays I'm drawing it. I'm drawing digitally because I I figured like uh, I always sketch on sketchbook because uh, on paper I mean because it's the best you know pencil paper pen paper sure sure it feels like really great but because I will work uh, digitally like probably for you know years to come so I'm trying to do some sketches on Photoshop as well, because that's one of my weak, weaker points. You know, I always do rough sketches, like really, really rough. So that's one of the lessons that I got from the studios that I need to be patient. One of the guys says to me, like, don't rush your sketch, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like the foundation of your painting. So yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> actually a really yeah. good point. Um, good, yeah. Cause okay. do, do, uh... yeah. Mate, uh, just one quick thing. Do you do like uh, speed, like speed sketches, or uh, is it like as a warm up, or do you, do you kind of stay away from that and kind of really take your time with like each thumbnail? Each thumbnail? Oh, I, I I do short sketch. I mean speed sketches, like short poses, figure sketches, something like that. I still do that because yeah. I don't know, it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> keeps you sharp, right? Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Um, right. Jonathan says, uh, concept art is dead is a great talk to look up on YouTube on the subject of efficiency over personal taste in creating in a studio. I believe, yeah. is that Shadi Safadi that did that talk? It, it definitely, yeah, for sure. Okay, definitely yeah, Shadi. Yeah. yeah, I think a, I may have seen that. Um, yeah, it's one I recommend a lot of students just watch just to keep up to date as well, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he's, yeah. he's one of those guys that's like never paint anything always photo bash there's no <laughs> use in learning fundamentals if you can just photo bash 
Uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. I've, uh, I, I actually reached out to him one time and I sent him some work to, to look over. And, uh, that's exactly what he said to me. He's like, well, you could, you could have incorporated some more photos into this. And I'm like, oh, but I like to paint everything. <laughs> um, all right. Wolf says, I pretty much, uh, end up sketching out ideas at like 1am. I'm finding myself sleep sketching. I think that's not a bad thing because I think a lot of times when you're like really tired like that, you're, you're not overthinking. And I think overthinking can kind of be a detriment to artists, um, mm. especially like when you're finding yourself stuck. So sure. yeah, hosting my stream. Oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, Wolfa is hosting our stream, which is really awesome. Um, uh, she says, I use my laptop now rather than my iPad. Loving the new tablet. Oh, I, one, uh, Van, thanks for the follow, Van Rack. I really appreciate it. Um, one of the questions that Wolfa asked earlier, too, was, do you have any recommendations for female artists in the, like, looking to get into the industry? Um, and it, it, if I, if I may take this one first, I, you know, n none of us are females, so we can't speak for the female race, but just in terms of my own, um, just two cents and take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Oh, uh, thanks for the follow, uh, profane canvas. Really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I feel like not identifying yourself as different than anybody else is the best way just as an artist to approach making art like unless you're specifically trying to inject your femininity into your work and that's like your thing i think otherwise there's not really any point in trying to separate yourself from anybody else because at the end of the day guys girls whatever we're all trying to make awesome art we're all trying to do cool stuff and um you know not overthinking any of that kind of stuff, I think is, is just going to help you at the end of the day. Um, mm. I don't want to like get too political with anything, but I just think that as an, like as an employer, you know, employers are just looking for really passionate, really technically proficient people to work for them. They're, you know, unless somebody has an agenda, which I don't think is necessarily right. Um, you know, as a good employer, you should just be looking for good artists. So, <laughs> Um, being the artist, you shouldn't think of yourself as any different than anybody else. So if that makes sense, do you guys have any input on that? Um, uh, just, just for me then, uh, before I, uh, jump, out, jump on to nice, cause I, I think it's a, it's, it's a good question. Cause, um, recently they've have having this discussion, I think, cause you know, that, um, kind of women in games and mm -hmm. that kind of overall like kind of movement and women in film because they i think they are trying to get like that more like female because uh, it, it I, I know for a long time in games it's kind of overly kind of saturated yeah. with girls and uh, especially in the high like higher roles as well so but i do i do think it's heading in a good uh direction at the moment because it's it, it kind of balancing out it's it's an interesting one for me because it, there's a lot of controversial stuff um as well about it but from my take like like you say it, sh it shouldn't matter really if um it and like end of the day the artwork is what is important and what you can do and yeah i think movements like the women in games is is good to raise awareness and stuff like that but i think if you're like on the outside you know um being just as best you can be at your craft is, is going to help you. And, and just to kind of give a, a prime example, like one of my friends in college is, is a girl and she was like a really badass 3d modeler. And then she just kept going to networking events. And eventually she got a job uh, working on the EA sports franchise, like modeling, like basketball players faces and stuff like that. So like, you know, I, I don't, I can't say for sure if her being a girl like helped at all with that, but just for me looking at her work, like, and, and her passion, like she was just a badass and got to where she wanted to be because she worked really hard, you know? So. Um, yeah, actually I wanted to ask Mace, do you, do you have any um, females in your like team uh, currently? 
Yeah, we have like, well, like you said, like there's not many females in the studios. Bro. We have like a two, three, three females. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but they, you know, they create they create good art, like great art. That's that's all that matters. Let's say. Mm -hmm. So they don't see like, oh, you're a female or you're a male, you're a guy or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. think that, you know, that's important. You know, in the in the end, like, if you do great arts, then you're gonna get hired, <laughs> and yeah. you're gonna you're gonna make money. You're gonna you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, a great female artists, and then, and I would say they, I would say they don't they don't probably thinking they don't they don't think something like that you know something like male or female mm -hmm. or matters yeah they just want to do yeah you know, just, they just want to draw in pain yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. um okay let's read through some more of these uh i do find my find night time to be the most creative time for me as well huh i think a lot of artists are <laughs> night owls um okay let's just see i found the potential any potential leads for artwork have always been from really creepy people. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> um, but, um, just, just really quickly. Um, go ahead, I just want to ask Mace as well, because like, do you find just this is a question I got the other day. Uh, do you find yourself more creative or productive during the day or during the night time? For me? Yeah. During the day, <laughs> like in the morning, when uh, I have a, a lot of energy, <laughs> so, I'm the most creative. Most creative. Well, that's for me, yeah. Yeah, because I have, yeah, because it, it's interesting because I've been, um, I don't know if they've been studying about it, but um, they've had some things where, uh, like, certain times they, uh some some people are more active like productive in the brain and like creativity sometimes it sparks at different times so but i guess it just depends from person to person depending on what you do as well so. um so profane canvas has another good uh comment i think they said in my case i feel like a single plant in the middle of the desert being an artist in in brazil I guess Discord in here should be a good place to build a network. Um, so I, I, it's it's hard for me to put like necessarily exactly put myself in your shoes because there are like a decent amount of opportunities here, um, especially in Texas. And um, I I will say though that yes, any any sort of if if you don't have access to physically going to a place to meet with other artists, then online communities are going to be your best friend because, you know, making friends with people that have, that are in studios online or, you know, have had work or, you know, can share your stuff it is just going to help you. And it, I think it's, it's almost going to be like a little bit more of like a kick in the ass for you, um, not being able to attend, uh, events um to just push your online presence it, it, it just means that you need to put yourself out there even more online share your work and try to you know spread the word of your of yourself so that people know like you're an awesome brazilian artist you know um do you oliver i know i think in the uk you you're pretty spoiled with opportunities as well but um, Mace, yeah. do you do you, I know you have your studio there, but do you find in Indonesia there's a lot of um, opportunities for artists, or or do you uh, um, do you kind of feel like a, a plant in the desert as well? <laughs> well, I think in, the, in I think in the recent year we have like some improvement especially for artists, mm -hmm. they have this gathering or they have a circle and some of them even have a community and they would go and do some, do a couple of workshop, you know, for like a beginner artist mm -hmm. or like beginner artists to attend to. Like, uh, I think a couple of months back then they did um, a concept art, beginning concept art, something like that for uh, someone that who really wants to try concept art. You know, and I would say that's pretty great, you know, 
but again then like these days like online presence i would say play like an important role mm -hmm. you know well yeah. i myself should try <laughs> and use uh the online platform a little bit better though because yeah. i kind of got lazy to upload my stuff on instagram something like that i even like almost never open like i barely open instagram <laughs> in daily basis so it's i wouldn't say it's really bad but it's not good for you know my online presence as an artist because i think in the end i, I would love to do some freelance work you know because yeah i think freelance is better than working in-house because we can we have a uh, that much freedom you know sure working as a freelancer yeah um, That's go, going off the point of like uh sharing on social media and freelance and stuff like that like one of the best advices i've been given is to always be hustling and always be looking for opportunity while you're already busy because as a freelancer it's really easy to like have a high and be like oh i don't need to look for any work i'm like steady right now blah 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 and then everything will kind of fall apart so even when you're you're you know peaking that should be when you're pushing your social media the most when you're looking for other opportunities because when something dies then you can keep working on something else afterwards or like you already have eyes on you so to speak um so yeah uh jonathan also commented my recommendation going on the um female artist thing my recommendation is to seek out female studio artists and understand the stereotypes you'll face going into that field that's a very mm. good point because we're three guys sitting here trying to give um advice on female artists but <laughs> doing the best Hopefully i can <laughs> Um, hopefully we can get some more female artists get guest artists on here so yeah so. yeah maybe i can get my friend who's working for ea that, that might be pretty oh. cool um, um yeah yeah uh Zer zeriga sofia says is there no support in brazil for artists so i again i've never been there but i i do know you guys have a massive country and what i would even look for in terms of um just sort of a networking event is look for like a local like figure drawing class or something like that like i've made a lot of cool friends doing that when i was in philadelphia um i would go hang out draw some figures and then we'd go like get a drink afterwards and um i i met some pretty cool people that way um also another good place to find artists at least from my experience is is going to comic book shops because a lot of people that go to comic book shops are guys that like to draw you know so you, you might meet artists and and sometimes you're um your comic book, local comic book guy might be hosting a drink and draw or something like that. Um, do you guys warm up or just continue with what you're working on? Mace, do you warm up in the morning or do you typically just like kind of dive right into work? I usually warm up, warm up since I got into the studio because I think it's basically because I don't have, you know, enough time after work. So I, I usually warm up in the morning before uh, 9 a.m. Yeah, okay. for the work starts. Gotcha. Yeah, I. Yeah. It, it depends on the day for me. It's like if I'm feeling like kind of sluggish, like typically because I'm doing a bunch of stuff right now, like my warming up is like reading through emails and responding and that kind of wakes me up. Um, in terms of art though, like, I don't know. Like when I would when I go through phases of doing studies in the morning, that's kind of my warm up. Um, but generally, I'll just kind of dive right into work. Oliver, do you have like a warm up process or anything? Um, I think um, recently, yeah, I've, I I should be doing more in my opinion because I, I think it's it's super important and uh, they're often for me it's kind of underrated because I notice the difference. Uh, just doing, you know, that kind of dot to dot line kind of action. And mm -hmm. I know I really notice a difference um, when I'm especially sketching digitally that throughout the day, um, the drawings are much better. Like when I've done those like 20 minute practice, just doing circles and lines. And it, it's definitely to get that motion and like in your arm definitely mm -hmm. helps. 
made a definite um, improvement just throughout the day, just gen drawing. And it, and I, I do notice like when it's when you're starting out and you go straight in, it's like you're there's this tendency to not not like def definitely like lose confidence. I think a bit. Sure. So, it's really important like i've um there's an artist actually um uh called uh, john park uh he's yeah. i think my familiar yeah he's yeah definitely always emphasizing how important these warm-ups are because i i, I uh, strongly believe it's useful <laughs> definitely yeah so nice. yeah. um Wolfa says would you say that while we while you were just starting getting started out in learning or you learned a lot about yourself as a person in the process mm. Ooh, that's a that's like a deep question <laughs> do you guys have any have any input on that i don't know i i enjoy <laughs> that's interesting that is uh... I, I feel like okay let me let me go I, I I um I I feel like when I was younger I would see a lot of artists work and and we were always taught growing up as artists that like oh artists is like a, a be, creating art is a part of you and you know you're expressing yourself and blah 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 and I would always just paint like freaking dragons and warriors and I was like this isn't me like it's just what I like to do and I was always like kind of upset at myself that I couldn't like let go and put my um myself into my work I, I don't I think this might be a little bit off topic but I just think it's kind of interesting um and what I've kind of found out as I got older is I I feel like my storytelling is more what is Nick than the specific individual things I paint. So like, I, I think I said this on stream before, but the game I'm working on now, and even uh, Mask of Semblance, when I was working on that, a lot of the themes that are interjected into the story and just kind of the style, that's like the core, like Nick. And, and I found out a lot more about myself through those processes than when I was just creating individual illustrations, because I think also um, working as a freelancer, you're having to do stuff for clients and it's, it's, it's even harder at that point to, um, showcase your own sort of personality when it's somebody else's idea, if that makes yeah. sense. I think, yeah, Nick, for me as well, just really quickly, I, I, I probably can answer just a little bit, but I won't go too far. <laughs> um, uh, I think for me, it's, uh, like, I think um because i i struggled a bit like three years ago just kind of refinding myself like mm -hmm. kind of in a loop and thinking what what I, why am i doing art and what what the whole meaning of it without getting too deep and yeah. <laughs> uh i think i think generally i think uh speaking as well as for me from my perspective i think a lot for me definitely like i've the reason kind of i wanted to, made me kind of wanted to do art is um kind of being able to connect with others and just share just kind of share that um and just learning and sharing has always kind of drove me the most more than just the drawing itself it's mm -hmm. just that thing to just connect with others because uh, i was quite a, not i wouldn't say very lonely but i often didn't connect that much with other people and i was like much younger so mm -hmm. i think that's a struggle that most a lot of people face that go into art and generally i think um we all like um we we often want to connect with people and share like what you know what we have and learn from other people because i think that's kind of what really drove me and and in terms of like uh process I, uh, it's interesting i think when you look back on your old work and you see what kind of colors you used and what themes and you don't really question at the time but then i think as you kind of develop you you see the the links in your experiences and like because i've seen some um artists you can really see 
like the colors they use if they're like a happy person or warm person mm. but i think their personality kind of like delves into the artwork itself that's interesting i never <laughs> i never even thought about that that your yeah, color palette that, kind of defines your personality yeah because <laughs> my extent. It's interesting because my girlfriend mentioned it before because I, I didn't realize it till quite recently that in my general portfolio, although I have like kind of a generalist kind of approach, you notice what kind of themes and uh, what colors I tend to use and mm. <laughs> it really comes off and I, I tend to gravitate a lot towards like warm, saturated oranges and mm. I found that really interesting because my background really i i came my general background is like seaside and kind of beach and i like that kind of warmth so i think it really it's an interesting point yeah yeah that's pretty cool but, yes, yeah do you have yeah wow. well that was deep <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, mace have you I, learned about yourself through your through your artwork oh my God. I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> if I would say, some, I could say something, I guess it's the other way around for me, I would say. Like, I already know, like, know myself, you know. And so that's why I already know what type, what type of drawings or painting illustrations that I would like to do. Mm as I would say, because I don't know. I really like um, drawing human figure and studying the anatomy, you know, into like, to the like uh, smallest detail that I could get. I would say, yeah, I'm that kind of person, you know, I, I, would, I really love to mess with the detail, you know, mm -hmm. doing something well. I wish I could do something like uh, a detail, like perfectly, but you know, maybe I'm a perfectionist or something. So yeah, that's why I, I, I love to draw like um, in the style of realism, I would guess I, I would go on mm. that path, you know, I've been trying to. That's an interesting. Way. Yeah, sorry. I think it's the other way around for me though. <laughs> no, just sorry, sorry to just cut right there because I think there's a com interesting conversation right now actually. Because do you kind of lean more towards like realism, or do you like the aspect of like stylizing in your work, like that kind of stylization? Um, I still like the I still like the subtlety of realism. You know, the subtlety in a human body, humans, humans anatomy. It's really subtle that sometimes other people probably wouldn't notice that and I would notice, you know, mm -hmm. in a painting, something like that. I love um I love seeing stylized stuff, you know, stylized stylized art illustration. For example, like a splash art. Um it, it is a stylized interpretation of uh, art. And mm -hmm. I love seeing those. But if you if, it, uh, if I would try and do that, you know, and do something like that, I don't think I could, you know, I could accomplish that thing. You know, uh, there's a saying in, in, in the studio and they say, like, uh, you got to know what you're after. Like, try to differentiate between something that you like to see mm. or enjoy to see and something like, as something that you really love to do you know mm. for me i i love like uh, illustrations like magic the gathering you know something more like realistic the costumes and you know almost everything uh, lean towards a realism rather than a splash art because it's uh, probably one of the reasons because splash art I would say it's a lot of work in the terms of rendering, in the terms of polishing, mm -hmm. whereas um, uh, illustration, trading card illustrations, like Magic the Gathering, it's like um, the fundamentals 
you know, it, it's le leaned to more towards fundamentals like compositions, you know, uh, mm -hmm. value structure or something like that. If all of those, uh, if, if we get all of those right, then the rendering base is just like, you know, we can be as loose as, uh, as we can, sure. mm -hmm. you know, as long as it looks like nice or something, but in a splash art is everywhere has to be a tight rendering. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I think that's an interesting uh, point because uh, I think like you mentioned, like what we see online might not be actually what we enjoy actually doing. Like you, like you say, it's it's, it's a yeah. that's an interesting one. Yeah, because I I see people like we get so influenced by online on like social media we see someone doing a cool vehicle and then we feel like we have to do this be able to do the same yeah. thing like i, I yeah. felt like <laughs> crap all the time and i every time, <laughs> and whenever you do post and i'm just like god damn it i'm so behind <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> so yeah it's it's interesting yeah because we keep quick keep questioning oh are, is what we're doing the right way or mm -hmm. are we join it and I think it, it, it's interesting about to uh, I'm for me it's questioning like what 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 does my art mean and I think it's a uh, yeah you touched a really great point yeah yeah I think so. I think there's a certain sort of like practicality to what you need to be making as well because um like again like I I, I don't know I grew up drawing like manga and anime and stuff like that like most kids do and it's kind of like I don't want to make it sound like if it was up to me but it's kind of like what I really like looking at and and doing is just like sketching and I do love painting um mm -hmm. but I just like making crazy characters and you know not really thinking about uh finishing stuff all the time I guess but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, if you want to grow your following, if you want to, you know, get a job, there's certain types of work that you kind of need to, to do to, to get there. And um, um, that's why when a lot of people ask, like, what, what should they put in their portfolio? It's like mm -hmm. you need to have a consistent body of work. That doesn't mean you only need to have characters in your work, but you're but somebody needs to look at your portfolio and get the story about like who you are as an artist just by kind of seeing it. And that's what you really want to push and that's what you want to be showcasing online. And um what's interesting I think I, I found about myself is going back to this idea of like more stylized stuff, like um if you look at my portfolio, like 90% of it is like the really rendered, like realistic looking detailed stuff. And I do like doing that. But um, when I started working on my, my games, it, it sort of created this sense of freedom for me because I was able to just like let loose and, and work in a little bit more of a stylized manner, not care so much on the rendering aspect, more caring about design over anything else. Um, so it's it's kind of nice for me right now that I have that balance of like doing more fun stuff in in my mind and doing more professional stuff that I can showcase and get more work off of. So yeah, I, th yeah, I think that's a interesting topic that could we could kind of Do delve a whole in video for on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, but but yeah, so uh, just trying to keep track of time as well, Nick. Um, like. Mm -hmm. uh, how we how, should we get through a bit more questions or uh, do, do do we want to? I think most of these are just comments. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't. I haven't seen too many questions. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, we're at we're at an hour and fifteen. Um, I I <laughs> I'm kind of feeling like we're we're running out of time for a uh, a demo or anything like that, but it's. <laughs> Is there anything, Mace, that you wanna wanna show on your end, or or uh, anything having to do with like character design or anything like that you might wanna talk about? Yeah. Uh, probably like like the, the process or anything like that. Yeah, probably like uh, what I learned. I would say share probably 
what I learned the most in his sure. studios for 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 his past months because I was a mess like <laughs> before I joined the studio like uh, my process my everything because I think I was in a hurry to be able to do like masterpiece you know epic mm-hmm. illustration or something like that and then when I got into the studios uh i think i told oliver about this uh, the important important of references because uh, we need speed and everything so we assume that everything has been done like every illustration something like that so when we try when we start an illustration we will try and well we do the sketches first sketches and then we try to find when the time comes to color the sketch, uh, we will find we uh, we would think about the mood, you know, the lighting, the value structure, and everything. So for the references, we would want something, an illustration, you know, with a with the same condition, uh, lighting condition. Mm-hmm. that we want uh, with, the, with the same uh, ingredient that we have in our picture you know for example if we have a, a bro- if we have uh, rocks if we have rocks and we try to find illustration with rocks with similar kind of lighting in mm-hmm. a scene and then we, we, we study it you know we study the illustration oh uh, in this kind of lighting these particular rocks uh, would you know, would have this color in the light, or this color in the dark, or something like that. So when we study it, we will get, you know, definitely better. Like I mean, like ridiculously better. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like something. It's uh, if I would say like for like a better term, it's mm. like a magic. You know, you already know like oh, these rocks, these rocks will be this yellow. In a light, and then would be would have a, a cooler color in the shadow, something like that. And you have you know like how cool is it, how cool it is, how 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 warm it is. So basically, references like it's so important, you know. Are you are you primarily using photo reference? Are you shooting your your own photos, or are you using three D reference? What kind of stuff are you using to help you out? Um, I mostly use for reference, but shooting our own reference is probably recommended. I mean, not probably, it's absolutely recommended because we or we ourselves knows what we want in our scene because for references all around the internet could only provide, you know, so far, like sure. the pose probably the, the, the angle probably off you know, mm-hmm. most of the time. So shooting our photo reference, absolutely recommended, I would say. Gotcha. Do you, have you ever uh, used um, Daz 3D oh. or anything like that to pose to pose figures? Oh, I haven't, I haven't okay. got a chance. To, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I use that in my workflow sometimes. I, I actually, for my, uh, for the stream on Monday, I'm going to, be doing another like little character drawing and I uh, couldn't figure out the lighting to save my life. So I just posed a figure and I, I put some polygons around it to like cast shadows in a cool way. And I, I find that over relying on 3d is not good because there's a lot of like, like you said, subtleties with like real human figures that you wouldn't necessarily get with a 3d model. But in terms of like quick things, like if the, if, if there's a block here and the light is coming here, it's going to cast a shadow here kind of thing. It's, it's, it's good for stuff like that. Yeah, so. definitely. You were going to say something, Oliver. No, sorry. Someone just, uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned quick. Um, it's, uh, it's you just, uh, this person just asked, uh, what do you guys do when designing character, but can't be sure which version of the design to pick? Um, I don't want to delve too much into it, but just, Generally, like Mace, yeah. How do you um 
when you kind of narrow down your characters, like what's like your general approach to like a brief or something? Just very quickly. I know it could uh, be a long process. But, yeah. for, for character designs? Yes, yeah, yeah, for character designs. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It's basically like everything else that I do, I try to narrow it down mm. based on my based on the story because mm. that's the most important thing. For example, like uh, for character design, maybe I want to design a knight and I will do uh, probably sketches, thumbnails, something like that for the nights. But I already have a story because uh, the story keeps me, you know, the story is the limit, I would say. So it keeps the design cohesive mm -hmm. and it keeps like my, my creativity like in a, in a place that it's supposed to be, I would mm -hmm. say. Because sometimes when in a thumbnailing stage, I would love to go like super crazy with the design, like armor and stuff, something like that. But then I would refer back to the stories that is this guy really need this stuff, you know? Is this guy really need this big of, a, of an armor mm -hmm. or no? Well, basically, as long as the thumbnails or the drawing that we do, like the rough sketches that we do tells the story, then for me, it's done. I mean, we can move on to the next stage, you know. Mm. Maybe add some little bit, little bit of, uh, you know, cool things, one or two cool things, but try not to go overboard. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I think um, making too many thumbnails in a batch can um, sometimes make it more confusing how to narrow down your character usually the way I, I i start thumbnail thumbnailing is going off this idea of a story is i thumbnail with a theme in mind right it's not like i have an idea for a character and i'm making like 10 random variations of the character it's like maybe the character's feature is a scarf let's just say and the scarf is like what tells the story of the character i'll have variations of that scarf in a bunch of different ways with the different clothing um but that way it's like you're 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 not like oh should this be a lizard man all of a sudden you know what i mean it's it, you're already kind of being consistent with um what you're trying to tell with with that character and it's i think that's what's going to help um you be able to narrow stuff down yeah so. no, that's that's a yeah no, thanks for uh answering that because I, I think at the moment as well i'm i'm kind of uh going through that phase of designing a like a cyberpunk character for my project for my university project and um i think there's 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 so much um out there right now on youtube um gum road every like i think uh, uh to find oh i oh. think oliver just oh. got just got kicked. Uh, sorry, guys. Oh. Hello. There you Hello. go. Sorry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you got booted by accident. I don't know what happened. And your, oh. camera, your camera's off, too. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how much? Because I think I was talking for a few minutes. But... <laughs> I, I don't know. I would just start over, honestly. Oh, no. Okay. So, yeah, I was just saying, um, so in terms of, like, character design, um, there's, uh, you you want to, there's a lot on out there on, already on YouTube and the internet, and there's, there's so many different ways of tackling it. I think, uh, for me, it's... Um, uh, write, write, write everything down, like your goals, the personality, and uh, just gr kind of gradually, because you need you need those constraints. What I what I see quite commonly is uh, people haven't wrote down the um, like what what the personality is, what the height and what the age. Really, kind of delve that dive deep in 
do what you're trying to design because um the problem with working sometimes with just like those silhouettes and doing loads of thumbnails like say we can kind of go in this kind of in the loop where it's um you're just designing forever and like a few minutes later oh you're experimenting with shapes rather than actually tackling down what the character needs so for based on like for me i think the simple you keep it like character uh, age and what the character's purpose is is uh, super helpful because yeah it's for any designing anything but yeah there's there's lots lots of character design tutorials out there yeah, for anyone what's it I, I nick i think um we should we could put like a resource down for people eventually and they can find food stuff uh, yeah. Help. Yeah. yeah oliver also um we just got a uh cubes just redeemed the shout shout out and art tip reward oh, okay. so this is our first one all right we're gonna shout out an art tip okay so so on a sphere when you're lighting a sphere where the where the light meets the shadow is called the terminator and in the terminator that's where you're going to get the most saturated colors and around the terminator is where you're going to see most of the texture of whatever object um is on that sphere so that's that's an art tip for you. Mace, do you have one? An art tip? <laughs> yeah, no. uh, you can go first, Oliver. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we all need to do one. I, I, I got it. If we get another one, I'll, I'll have one of you guys shout an art tip. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> that was wow, that was an awesome art tip. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, back to the topic of, uh, characters and stuff like that. So, um, Mace, I know you're not doing too many character things for the studio right now, but what is your general process? Like, do you start with a line drawing? Do you just do you start with a thumbnail and then you kind of build up like a painting from that? Like what's your, your sort of general painting process? Uh, I start with line drawing most of the times. Well, nowadays, I guess, because I used to start with shapes and silhouettes, something like that. And like you said, I got trapped with those shapes and <laughs> something gotcha. like that. Yeah, it's like cool shapes, cool everything, and yeah, that's why I think line art for me is like my go-to process, you know, right now, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, um, when I, I start with line art, I will try to get the proportion at least correct from the get-go, and then I will draw a bunch of, a uh, bunch of, you know, like manic, man, naked, naked figure, you know, without mm. costume and stuff. And I would, I would add uh, costumes later yeah. to build from the figure because costumes like drapery and stuff like that usually follow the, the contour of the human body. Sure. So yeah. it's easier for me to just draw a bunch of, uh, naked figure with different gesture and poses and then try to add the customs layer. Yeah. Um, actually, Mace, following, following that, because uh, you know you mentioned you're a Dragon Age uh, <laughs> fan. Uh, do, do you, you know, Matt, the, do you ever watch like Matt, Matt Rhodes' process for developing characters? I like, do. do you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it kind of, I've I've been kind of been keeping it w watching his way of thinking lately, and that's that's kind of the way I was I I think about uh, character design more, and just knowing what the goals are, and it's yeah, spends yeah, I think help he definitely helps with speed, but I think the one thing is is the like like you said earlier about rushing into things. Um, I feel like just being able to take time is 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 something I'm learning myself, and um, I, I think it's a topic that's 
not often talked about because we see so much online where we feel like we have to be quick with everything and I think for me anyway like I think the importance of slowing down yeah. I think uh, it's like yeah what what are your thoughts on that on the like on that really about speed and slowing down I think it depends on uh, um, each one of us but I myself believe that taking our time like slowing down it's mm -hmm. faster than just do like a bunch of mm -hmm. well i don't know well, some of the guys in the studio they would they move pretty fast with their hands so and yeah. there's this one guy if you see him from from behind yeah he would like he's just sitting like he's not moving but then <laughs> yes. he was like super fast like every every brush strokes like that he he does it's like uh every, everything has meanings you know everything's intentional yeah it's intentional that's that's why it's really fast but when you see him from from behind it's like he's just sitting there <laughs> like he's not moving whereas uh, every other artist you know every other artist like they're moving their hands real fast and uh, sure like you know rendering the detail but for him it's like you know, he's just chilling on his chair you know doing painting and stuff and it's really quick like he's doing like oh damn uh, how many splash shots like he's doing his second about to start the third one in uh less than two months wow and in between he's doing i think he does couple of dnds mm. crazy mm. like and he's doing freelance stuff. Yes. <laughs> guys yeah. really fast like but he, he i wouldn't say fast in terms of he, uh, his hands a bit, but i think uh he, he's he's thinking really fast that's why his decision making is like super super like it's it's better than the rest of us i would say because mm -hmm. everything he does like well he knows he knows what he does yeah like, for I think, I think good. Hours. yeah so sorry to cut you off but i think that's just a good indicator of uh experience as well because mm -hmm. um i think um like when we when we move fast like that i think it's the feeling of in that in decisiveness mm -hmm. and he, Oh, from a master like artist when they know what stroke to make at or what shape to make in, in just a few like when they plan it out and visualize everything first rather than because I've seen so many artists like they paint they have to get everything down quickly and they like for me as well I, I struggle with it. I think speed speed paints are such a dangerous thing <laughs> we've been talking about this for quite a lot but I think just knowing uh what shape to put down right at the start is it's much more efficient and i find it more efficient now in my pr own process like get kind of get all the black um especially even for landscapes kind of get all the shapes in place first just in black and white and just do those in just very big uh quick strokes um rather than like kind of noodling Noodling, yeah, exactly. I, I, uh, I think on the topic of speed, what a lot of um, younger amateur artists are are concerned about is like, how long does it take you to finish blah 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 painting? And oh. it's kind of hard to to answer. And I know in the instance like Mesa's talking about, when you're at a studio, you're going to have certain expectations of how quickly to finish something. But just like in his experience, it sounds like it. it when you're forced into a position, when you already have some experience, when you're forced in a position to work quickly, it's easier to learn how to uh, finish things faster. But when you're just working on getting better, you should take as much time with intention as you possibly can to finish stuff, because that's the best way you're going to learn. Like, 
it, it is sort of a, a trade off because you don't want to be noodling and you don't want to be, you know, um, uh, just just completely lost in, in your painting. But I, I think so many people are, are focused on like, oh, well, if I get a studio job, I need to complete a painting in five minutes that they don't take the time to like learn anything themselves. And it's kind of like once you have those fundamentals down and once you get better at just painting from memory and utilizing reference efficiently, then you're going to just naturally get faster. So like I, even from my own experience, like it used to take me, you know, 20 hours to finish a character design. I was like, why does it take me so long to like render something out? It's because I didn't know how lighting worked and stuff like that yet. It's, it's, it's just natural that it's going to take you longer when you're still figuring out a lot of stuff. But once you have more mileage, things will get quicker. So, yeah. Yeah. um, uh, okay. At the moment I'm playing around with inking. Any advice for that? Do you guys do any traditional inking or anything like that? I, to, in fact, for, me, really. for me, I think there's a, there are a lot of great comic book artists for, for learning how to ink and you can find a lot online, mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube as well. Um, for me personally, I think. Just um, advice for inking. It it really, I think it really depends on. Uh, it's advice. like com commit commit to your lines. That's the only advice I can give because I don't ink too much either. But like, there's literally nothing worse than seeing those scratchy ink lines because the artist is not like committing to stuff. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the only thing I would suggest. And the, the the thing is, is just to like we were saying, just slow down, just think about each each mark you're making, and really, it's it, it, it you like I think going fast doesn't mean it's you know you'll get that thing straight. It's better to like we said, just yeah, going fast doesn't mean that your hand is moving fast. Going fast means that you're being intentional with every brushstroke you're making. To, to get right. the painting overall done quicker because like you can render you know an ear for five hours just going over the same lines over and over but like you can create it, the shape the shapes that are in the ear in a couple strokes if you know how it's formed and what the lighting is like and what the colors are going into it and stuff like that i, I feel nick i feel like that could be a top just a top whole topic on itself yeah. so. <laughs> But yeah, um, so just not too much, but yeah. Uh, shall I go into another question as well? Well, just, uh, so uh, Zoriga Sofia just said, I love sketchy lines if they're well incorporated into the artwork. So there's a difference between sketchy lines and and um, what was the term I just used? Um, oh man, I just used a term to, to, it's not sketchy lines, but it's like when, when somebody's making these short strokes to make a broad line, that's what looks terrible all the time. It looks so bad. So like, it's okay if you're going over the same line a couple times in a broad stroke. And that's what I think can give that sort of sketchy feel. But when somebody's trying to make a round form and they're doing like 14 little tiny lines to make that round stroke, that's when it, the, the, Thing just kind of falls apart because like if you look at if you imagine a person or, or an object as contour lines like you're imagining big sweeping strokes you're not imagining these like little tick marks basically mm -hmm. and i'm not talking about hatching i'm talking about contour lines so. yeah but I, I you you guys bring a good point now because i i think as a student though i think it's really important not to feel like you have to get everything in one you know in one light and because i think what definitely what helped me when i was learning is just first understanding uh because there's a difference between intentional like messy lines and then mm -hmm. like sketchy kind of unconfident lines because exactly. for me i think get understanding the form and structure and just getting the understanding rather than worrying too much about line art is ex the quality of the line art obviously sure is important but i think when you're first really start starting out what benefited me most is just kind of loosen up and get the the motion in there and 
because like my uh, do you remember Jay Mace as well? Yeah. Uh, um, our not Jay. Wait, is it Jay? Yeah, our anatomy yeah. teacher. Yeah, because yeah, he, he helped me at uh in when I was in film school and I was uh trying to during the figure drawing classes. He told me just to not tense up so much and just mm. kind of let go and not not try and make everything perfect all at once because you want to understand the figure first and just get the feel of like the proportions and that's why gesture drawing is actually so great and sometimes really beneficial to do like just uh um 30 second to one minute drawings because it just helps you kind of loosen up and just relax and just once you've got those general forms then you come in later with kind of um more you know precise precision I think the, the the problem we see people like Kim Jong Ji, right? <laughs> that's and, just not even fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's I think that's the problem we see a lot of students now. Because we feel like we have to get everything perfect with that pen line in one stroke. Whereas yeah. it's had loads and loads of experience doing all the like understanding form and structure. Mm-hmm. It's I, I feel like it's understanding before getting precision is. Mm-hmm most effective for, like for my personal learning so I, I don't know about that for you Nick really but it's definitely no yeah, yeah. That, I, I I agree with everything you're saying definitely don't take Kim jong Ji as a as a reference for how you should draw because that, <laughs> that dude is a maniac and we forget if like he's 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 been drawing for a very long time yeah, like he, he's been he's, he's a bit older so he's definitely got some experience under his belt yeah <laughs> and you can just see like one of his sketchbook has has like ten thousand drawings in it so like that alone goes to show like how much this this dude has you know repetitively drawn things and like has committed it to memory so to speak he he's almost like a like a like a like a printer in the way he draws <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, are you, yeah. Are you just out of curiosity as well? Uh, are you a fan of uh, Kim Jong Ji's work, Mace? Or do you, do you like any of it? Uh, I like the works, but yeah, the way the way he he, he draws, uh, mm. it's not something that we ought to do. Because sometimes I hear people say that. Uh, some people would say don't use construction when drawing uh, construction line and I just cannot relate to that because mm. I don't know when <laughs> it's I think it's 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 uh, it's back to our personal preference you know some of us like to do construction all the time some of us just like to do like just get um, the just draw the eye first mm-hmm. when drawing the face yeah, like Kim Jong Gi, you know, drawing the, you know, the nose or something. <laughs> I can't do that. It's not yeah. something that I could do, probably in a couple of years. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> fine with, with with using construction lines actually. Yeah, I think that's an important point because, uh, like, uh, for me, I I I got told, oh, why are you doing all this messy construction work in my kind of figure drawing class from like other people and it, it's not the fact about getting that drawing perfect straight on the go it's like I think like I said um, previously it's just more about understanding the the structure right and knowing because you're you're not gonna just have that drawing and it's finished it's you have to have that process of understanding what you're drawing first before you can like draw it from your imagination like Kim Jong Ji does because even in, in his interviews he just explains like oh his his actual training and uh thinking process like because he's done it so many times and he mm-hmm. understands the form like he's done all those messy drawings that we don't get to see like uh in the future so I think it's just so so crucial that like students don't feel like they have to get that drawing perfect in one go yeah yeah and loads of times not just once yeah 
Yeah, we got a comment that says, I'd love if professional artists that are looked up to and respected weren't scared to show their mess ups or stupid drawings. I have a feel there'd be less misconceptions about the art process, which may block amateur artists from freely doing mistakes to to grow. I Yeah, I I can see that. I, I can also see like not showing your work because it's like you don't want to put that on Instagram and then your Instagram looks like crap or anything. But like on streams and stuff like that, like, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind showing paintings that I've just um, stopped doing because I was like, this looks like shit. I'm not going to continue. Um, and that happens quite frequently, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I, it, I, I think just raising awareness that like, you know, even, even the best of us like have terrible drawing days and it just is a normal thing is, is, um, is good to know. Yeah, I just, that's, that's a, uh, I just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to bring up, um, uh, one artist that I, I actually really admire because of showing um, his is is Mark uh, Mark Brené on okay. Cubebrush. Yeah, and he he did. I saw one of his videos. Like I think it was a, like two years ago now, but he he actually was honest about how he fucked. <laughs> I mean, how he um like messed up his painting. Mm -hmm. Like like he just completely. Uh, like he was really honest like he, he did it live on stream as well and he just said yeah he completely messed up his his process and like it so uh, there are like times like uh, there are artists I, re I have a lot of respect for artists when, when they show that mm -hmm. and it's nice to see yeah ex yeah excuse my <laughs> language uh, yeah just sorry yeah I'm trying to find your voice here show their bad stuff yeah when i've been having a bad art day i've tried to learn a new pose yeah yeah, yeah sometimes i'll just sit there and i'm just like I, I just need to accept that i'm having a bad painting day and sometimes you might need to work on something else or switch gears or whatever that's uh usually what kind of helps me get around that or honestly like it sometimes it means i need to go outside for a walk or just like get out of the house um that's a lot of the times what a bad painting day means for me. Arsenal robots, we know this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, does anybody have? We're kind of running a little long. Does anybody have any final questions for Mace before we kind of wrap this up? Or Mace, is there anything you want to um, talk quickly about or or mention? Yeah. Can, where Where can people find you on the internet? Oh. I actually have an Instagram <laughs> account, and what what's the account name? Because I don't even think I'm following you. It's uh, Maze. Dot. T A N. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, I am following you. Okay. Good. Yeah, Maze. Dot T A N, and I have an Art Stations account, but I haven't been up. You know, it has it has it hasn't been updated for so long because, well, I I think my Instagram is like the most updated platform right now for me, but I'm uh, I will try and post more mm -hmm. artwork because I kind of like I got enlightenment going into the studio, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of fired up to do some art. Nice, know? that's that's <laughs> yeah. always good to hear. Yeah. Cube yeah. says awesome work, Mace. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um <laughs> all right. So yeah, um you can find Oliver on uh Instagram at O Tugino Art. All right, it's O Tugino O underscore Tugino yeah. Art yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, just J I N O, just if there's any yeah, confusion for that. Yeah. Yep, and I'm yeah. at uh, Nick underscore Haji Alice. And um, yeah, I want to thank everybody. This has been a pretty awesome stream. We've gotten some good comments and everything. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us. And we'll uh, we'll see you guys all next time. All right, peace out, guys. Yep. Perfect.